So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the fish that I have in my aquaponics system. Basically some issues I have or had in the past few months. But that's pretty much what this video is gonna be about. So if you've seen my previous videos, you would basically know that I do have, I had fish in basically all these different tanks or different kinds. So these two were bluegill, then I had tilapia in here, different tilapia in there, and tilapia in there. So blue tilapia, Mozambique tilapia, and red Nile tilapia. But back in, was it like September, November, I had an issue where the temperature of the water kept fluctuating too much and was causing the fish to get a, some, sort of, sort, some sort of fungus because it was causing, a, well, for the tilapia at least, the bluegill were fine, but for the tilapia, back in like September to November, as I mentioned, the water temperature was going up and down. It'd go up during the day and down during the night too rapidly, which caused them to get some sort of fungus. And the only way to really treat that would be to take them out and add salt, but I noticed it too late, so I did lose a good amount of fish, especially from the blue tilapia and the Mozambique tilapia, which was unfortunate. And then in December, it started to get colder and I wasn't able to heat the greenhouse fast enough. So I did get a tank that I'll show you in my room. So I moved, I put a tank in my room, which I got in time, but for some reason, every time I would add a fish in there to test it out, it would die. So I realized a piece of log that I put in there, uh, which was for a turtle to, turtle to sit on, a small turtle that I have in that tank as well, was leaching some kind of chemical which caused the fish to die. So by the time I got the tank ready and everything, a cold spelt hit and it caused a good loss of the red Nile tilapia, which is unfortunate. So I did lose a good amount of fish starting in September, in September and ranging until December. But right now, I'll basically show you the tank I have in my room and the plan that I do have for it. So here's the fish tank that I set up in my room for the tilapia, plus the pleco that I had since it was getting too cold. It's a 120 gallon acrylic aquarium. And as I mentioned earlier, I had a, I have a turtle in here or a musk turtle. And I had a log that I put in here, which was causing every time I'd add a fish in to die because it was probably leaching something. Also the turtle didn't even want to go in the water. This is a primarily water turtle, but it would just sit on the log. So after taking that log out and draining everything, it worked well for these fish. So right now what I have in here is some blue tilapia. I think I have three blue tilapia one Mozambique tilapia, and then I have the red Nile tilapia, which are all the smaller ones. And there's the musk turtle. I'm not sure what kind of musk turtle it is, but it's a smaller variety of turtle. And there's a common pleco, so he'll get pretty big. So actually, after moving these fish in here, since it is easier to regulate the temperature for them, since you can put a heater in there and the th t temperature le fluctuates less, inside this general area. What I'm actually thinking to do is build an indoor aquaponics system here, which might be useful for a lot of you since many people do build them inside. But basically what I'm thinking of doing is getting a bigger aquarium, sticking it down here on the floor, and then having some NFT systems up here or wrap, or yeah, an NFT grow beds going along here. So pipes and stuff where I can put plants in there. I'll have to get a lot of uh, grow lights to stick in here as well. And also want to put a tank on here. Some ideas to have tilapia in this one and maybe do some shrimp farming. Some freshwater shrimp in a tank that I'll stick right there, which would be pretty neat to do. But that's the general idea for this area. But right now how it's set up, it is connected to a pond filter, which is more effective than just an aquarium filter. It's not a sightly, so I have to have the pump in here. Well, just because of this uh, temporary setup, I theoretically could have the water go higher, overflow through the overflow, go down into a sump, and then have the pump pump it up to there. But because of the turtle, I need to have a spot where you can come out and bask. Typically the water's up higher, but there's a lot of evaporation in here. But that's the general idea. And then maybe I can have a good amount of tilapia in here, and then during the summer move them out back into my aquaponics system, which is all the way over there in that greenhouse. So it took a process actually to bring them all over here, dumping them in there. Plus I took some water from the aquaponic system just to get the bacteria more into the aquarium, make it a faster process. If you're gonna take anything from this very simple video is that you want to keep your temperature as stable as possible. 
because that causes a good amount of issues to the fish when the temperature is fluctuating as much as mine does. The reason my temperature in the greenhouse fluctuated that much is specifically because it, it, it is in a greenhouse. And during that time, during September to November, during the day the temperature got quite warm and then at night it got decently or cold you can say and that caused a good amount of fluctuation just because of all the tanks and the surface area and the exposed area that allowed the water to cool down which caused the fish a good amount of stress because temperature is a good stress factor so just if you're doing an aquaponic system make sure to stabilize your temperature as much as you can if it does go at a slower rate that's fine but mine was going on a day-to-day -day basis morning night it would change a lot because the greenhouse would generate a good amount of heat during the day and then at night it would cool down dramatically so that's why i need to insulate stuff and that about sums up this video it's actually pretty neat to have the fish in here so i can see them in the morning and it's a lot cooler than just having to walk out to the greenhouse and kind of see them because the window has a lot of algae on it but with this i can see the tilapia and maybe the process of uh, them breeding if i do get to doing that in this particular area if i do keep this here there's always plans and things always change but if you do have any questions or comments remember as always to leave them below and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.